The first African to pass through professional training in Western Historical Scholarship, Professor Kenneth Onwuka Dike was the first indigenous vice-chancellor of the University of Ibadan and the Roman ambassador of Biafra to Côte d'Ivoire. The pioneer historian, Kenneth Onwuka Dike was born in Oka, present-day Anambra State, Nigeria, on December 17, 1917. He was the third son of Nzekwe Dike, an itinerant medicine man and trader. Dike lost his father in 1922 at the age of four and his mother, Unwudu Dike, a year later. Thus, young Kenneth became an orphan at an early age and was raised by his grandfather, Dike Nwancho. His other brother, George D.K., who was born in 1909, was another major influence on his life. In 1923, D.K. was apprenticed to an itinerant medicine man who operated between Oka and the commercial city of Onicha. He started his primary education at government school Oka and then his secondary education at government college Oka. In 1933, he enrolled at the prestigious Dennis Memorial Grammar School, DMGS, Onicha, Nigeria. After three years at DMGS, Dike spent another two years at Achimota College in the Gold Coast, present-day Ghana. From Achimota, he proceeded to Furabi College in Sierra Leone. At the time, the college was affiliated with and awarding degrees of Durham University. As a result, Dike gained his Bachelor of Arts certificates in English, Geography, and Latin from Durham University via Fora Bay. In 1943, Kenneth Dickey returned home to Nigeria but didn't stay long. In November 1944, Dickey left on a British Council scholarship for the MA degree in History at the University of Aberdeen. In June 1947, he graduated, bagging first class honors, the best of his year, at Aberdeen. Four months later, Dickey registered for his PhD at King's College, University of London. Under the supervision of Vincent Harlow and Gerard S. Graham, he did a dissertation entitled Trade and Politics in the Niger Delta, 1830-1879. He earned his PhD degree on July 28, 1950. After acquiring it, Dickey became the first African to pass through professional training in Western Historical Scholarship. The 1950s proved to have been Dickey's most productive scholarly years, preceding his university administrative career and later political activity in the interest of an independent Biafra. His study on the preservation and management of historical documents in Nigeria was published in 1953. This research had to do with creating the National Archives of Nigeria, which he later served as the director. Kenneth Onwuka Dike worked for a time as chair of the Nigerian Antiquities Commission in the same documentation and preservation manner. From 1963 until late 1966, Dike was vice chancellor at Ibadan. That is, he was that university's chief administrative officer. Prior to assuming that post, he had been the director of the Institute of African Studies at Ibadan, in addition to being director of the National Archives. His combined administrative academic skills also led to his appointment as chair of the Association of Commonwealth Universities. Dickey's resignation as the vice chancellor of the University of Ibadan came in December 1966. As an Igbo and an Easterner, his role as a head university administrator in Western Nigeria became untenable. A lengthy tussle to retain his position as a vice chancellor was lost to a Yoruba rival and DK at that point made the tenable decision to opt for a new life in an independent Biafra state. DK joined his fellow Igbo people in eastern Nigeria who were seeking secession and to form a separate nation. The new nation was to be called Biafra, which was located at the mouth of the Niger River and named for the Bight of Biafra. The name of this body of water separating the eastern and western parts of Nigeria has since been erased from maps of the reunified nation. From Ibadan, Dike went home to become Biafra's roving ambassador. He acted in this capacity from 1967 to 1970, traveling extensively and speaking out on behalf of the Biafran position in the civil conflicts. 
Professor Kenneth Onwuka Dike was the first to draw the attention of the international community to the fascinating outlines of a viable African epistemology instead of venturing into European history. As noted before, Dike, in spite of all odds, successfully carried out his doctoral dissertation, Trade and Politics in the Niger Delta, 1830-1885, later published in 1956 by the Oxford University as Trade and Politics in the Niger Delta, 1830-1885, an introduction to the economic and political history in Nigeria. By 1968, Dike's position with regard to Biafra had become unshakable. Before that time, Biafra's attempt to achieve a loose confederation with the West had its support. These overtures, however, were rebuffed by the Western powers. As a result, Biafra's eventual and necessary unconditional surrender was certainly a blow to this determined intellectual. Still, during the final years of the secession efforts, he served as Biafra's representative at ceasefire negotiations in Abidjan, Côte d'Ivoire. During the post-war years in the 1970s, Dickey went into exile and took up an academic position at Harvard University in the United States. He was president of the Committee on African Studies at Harvard from 1971 to 1973. He was then recruited to Harvard as the first Mellon professor of African history in 1973. He continued teaching there until 1978 when he was able to return to Nigeria. Professor Kenneth Onwuka Dike re-entered administrative work in Nigeria, this time as president of Anambra State University. Anambra was located in Enugu in the eastern part of the reunited nation northeast of his birthplace, Oka. Dike was accompanied by his wife, Ona, when he returned to Nigeria. He died in an Enugu hospital on October 26, 1983. He was 65. At the time of his death, one daughter, Eneka, and one son, Emeka, lived in Nigeria's capital city, Lagos, on the western coast. Three other children, two daughters, Chinwe and Honor, and one son, Obi, remained in the United States, in Cambridge, Massachusetts. <music> Kenneth Dickey was the first to draw the attention of the international community to the fascinating outlines of a viable African epistemology instead of venturing into European history. Through his book, Trade and Politics in the Niger Delta, 1830-1885, later published in 1856 by the Oxford University as Trade and Politics in the Niger Delta, 1830-1885, an introduction to the economic and political history in Nigeria, Dike made an immediate international impact as marking a new beginning in the historiography of Africa. The book greatly stimulated and inspired a new generation of practitioners of African history to make vigorous researches using various ways views and methods. Many African scholars went further to investigate Africa and African history, cultures and affairs other than theirs. Dickey also created enduring foundations which gave impetus to an African initiative or African-centered perspective when he mooted for the establishment of the Department of History in the University College Ibadan. He therefore used the Department of History to sow and water the seed of African epistemology. The history department soon became a center of excellence in African historiography in the world. In fact, at a point, the history department of Ibadan had no less than four full professors and began to supply staff, including vice chancellors, to other universities. At this juncture, it would be worthwhile to recall that the late Professor Kenneth Onwuka Dike was the first African head of history at the University of Ibadan and the first indigenous principal of the University College Ibadan and later the pioneer vice-chancellor of the University of Ibadan. The efforts of Dickey would be better appreciated if we remember that Ibadan was still under the control of Imperial London and its curriculum was stocked with European and English history as well as British colonial history. Dickey's idea of African first created a new generation of African historians who through the rigorous inquiry projected the glorious Africa internationally with pride and satisfaction. Another remarkable contribution of Professor Dickey to African epistemology with great emphasis on African initiative or African-centered perspective was the establishment of the Historical Society of Nigeria, HSN, in 1955, purposely to consolidate the gains envisaged from the training and research at Ibadan. 
the Historical Society of Nigeria HSN thus became the first and now the oldest academic professional body in Nigeria which produced most of the early practitioners of history who became professors, administrators, heads of institutions and contributors to national development. Prominent among them are Jacob Adeajai, Isaac Okonjo, C.C. Ifemesia, Ebiegberi Jo Alagwa, Tekena Netoye Tamuno, J.C. Anene, Emmanuel Ayodele, Obaro Ikime, Adele E. Afigbo, and S.J.S. Kuki. We always have more stories to tell, so if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. You can also check out our next video to know more about Chinua Achebe and why he never won the Nobel Prize in Literature. Thank you.